video, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the final paper for the course um, and make sure that you're sort of understanding how the previous assignments we have completed already in the course are leading up to this final paper. Um, so as you hopefully know by now, the final paper that you will be completing for me in, in this class is essentially one small part of the kinds of research articles that you've been reading. We will be writing only the literature review part of this assignment. So this week in particular, um, you had uh, read about and done some work in relationship to the literature review. So hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of what that part of the paper is supposed to be and do. One of the key things there is that the literature review essentially reviews the literature and provides a kind of overview as well as an argument about how a reader should understand the kinds of um, conversation, scholarly conversation that is happening around a particular topic. It is not an easy thing to do and it's my understanding that for most of you this is the first time you've ever tried to do this kind of writing. So it's important to understand that um, I'm not looking for some perfection here. Um, really this is an important opportunity because you'll have to do literature rev reviews in other courses that you take in the communication studies department. It is one of the most difficult parts of the research paper to write and so this is really meant to provide for you an opportunity to start learning how to do this. So it's an introduction more than it is a conclusion. Um, a few things to keep about keep in mind about the final paper is that um, what you will ultimately write for me in this class is five to six pages, so it's not an extraordinarily long paper. Um, this doesn't include the title page or the reference page, which you will also be expected to include. Um, you have to have five academic scholarly sources in this paper. We'll talk a little bit more about that. You have to use correct in-text APA citations. You have to have a reference page that's correctly formatted. And the paper overall should be formatted correctly according to APA guidelines. You can review these at OWL Purdue. Uh, the website we've been using in the class. If you don't remember how to do that, please visit the Citation Week and you will um, see a video there about how to use that website. This should be an example of the very best writing that you can do. It should be well organized. You should pay attention to the construction of your argument. That means you should have a thesis for this paper. Um, and in addition, you should really try to take on a scholarly tone. Try to write like the material you've been reading for the course. That is, again, not an easy thing to do and for many of you the first time that you'll be trying it. So it's not something I expect you to have conquered or perfected at this moment in time, but it is something that I expect you to attempt to do. Um, one of the things that means, at least in relationship to a literature review, is you shouldn't use the first person. You shouldn't use I. Instead, what you want to make prominent is the voice of the literature. One of the things that will help you to do this is if you consider using the formulas that I have offered in the instructions to the they say, I say assignment. So you may have tried to do this in that assignment, which I suggested you do. Um, you may have kind of overlooked those directions. Either way, I recommend that you go back to that assignment and that you look at the kinds of ideas I give you for how you should talk about the research in that assignment. That is, that will help you get a sense of the way you should be talking or writing in your overall literature, re literature review as well. Of course, type it, double spaced, normal margins, 12 point font. Make sure you, um, make sure you proofread and you will need to upload this to Blackboard on the day that it is due. Um, I'm going to use safe assign for this assignment, which means it will upload it to a database to check for things like plagiarism. But the main reason that I use it um, in this class is that if you use safe assign, it will generate a report for you. 
so that you can see um, whether your paper is being flagged for potential plagiarism. Um, so for instance, if you've used a quote out of a source and you haven't actually quoted it, um, the, this uh, technology will highlight that and show you where there's a problem. Um, I think that's a super useful tool and I highly recommend that all of you try to upload your paper at least a day before it's actually due so that you can um, assess the report that SafeAssign makes for you and make any changes that you might need to to ensure that there isn't plagiarism happening in your paper. Um, for this assignment, I know most of the time you can't re-upload an assignment, but for this assignment you will be able to. So if you want to change anything after you um, after you visit your Safe Assign report, uh, you're more than welcome to do so and then re-upload the paper. So I had already mentioned that you have to have five scholarly sources for this paper. If you have been completing all of the assignments, you already have these five sources or potentially already have these five sources. These were ones sources that you have read already for a number of previous assignments. So the first one was the summarizing, paraphrasing, and quoting assignment that you completed for me. This uh, article that you read for this assignment was a peer-reviewed scholarly source. It was a primary source because it included either original data or an original argument. Just in case you need some uh, memory jogging, the assignment, the paper that you read for me for this assignment was called Effects of the News Finds Me Perception in Communication. Social Media Use Implications for News Seeking and Learning About Politics. Um, the next assignment that you completed for me was the Reading Critically assignment. Again, this assignment required you to read a scholarly peer-reviewed source, which was also a primary source. And this assignment was Read All About It, The Politicization of Fake News on Twitter. And then finally, you were asked to read for the What It Says, What It Does assignment, another scholarly source. This one was With Facebook, Blogs, and Fake News, Teens Reject Journalistic Objectivity. So on the surface of it, each of these assignments aren't just about fake news. They're also about other things that you might be interested in. Um, you have the freedom to define what your research topic is about for this assignment, as long as it fits under the broad umbrella of fake news. For some of you that is thinking about how news circulates on social media, particularly uh, fake news circulates on social media, for others it's thinking about how uh, fake news might be related to uh, political, to our, our political climate or c concerns about democracy. Um, with each of these things, it's important to recognize that you're going to have to be selective in the material that you utilize from these sources in order to make it fit. Um, you may end up finding that it just doesn't fit well enough to be able to use for your final paper. So you can make that determination on your own, and if you so choose, you would have to replace one of these articles with another. But I feel like all of them are broad enough that they should have some information that seems to relate to the topic that you want to want to explore. And if you need a little help in figuring that out, please feel free to, to send me an email or to give me a call and we can talk through the specifics of those articles and how they might relate to the topic that you're interested in exploring. The last um, assignment that you did was the They Say, I Say assignment. And in this assignment, you were asked to find two sources on your own that you would use in your final paper. Uh, the expectation was that these were different than the free previous three that you read. And so if you've completed this assignment, that means you should have five scholarly sources that you can use. Like I said, for some of you, you may replace one or two of those, uh, but you should be pretty close to being set. So the next steps in our um, final paper, or the literature review that you will write for me, is the outline. <clears throat> this is a labor-intensive assignment. 
will take you anywhere from four to six hours to complete. Um, it is essentially an outline form of your final paper. So uh, it asks for you to use full sentences. It asks for you to cite the sources that you're going to use as evidence for the claims that you're making, um, including you should practice using correct in-text citations for these. Um, and you should really focus your attention on your argument in this paper. What is your thesis and what are the main points that you want to highlight? And your overall organization. One of the most important things about the outline is it allows me to be able to give you feedback on how you're constructing your argument before you get to the point of writing your final paper. So that is really a key reason that um, I have you do this. It also may be when you find out that one of the sources might not work as well as others. So at this point you can, you know, still make some adjustments to that. After the outline, we will have the final paper that is due. In this, you have to have five scholarly sources. You can use more, and you can even use non-scholarly sources, popular press sources or even trade magazines that we have found along the way. We've been reading a lot of examples that fit with the idea of fake news. Any of those sources would be fair game to also use and integrate into your final paper. Um, you should make sure that you have correct citations. And again, it should be an example of your best writing. Um, I will be providing you with feedback on your final paper. And in that feedback, I will identify anywhere from two to three key things that I think if you changed these things, it would make a big difference in the quality of your overall paper. Your very final revision is due during our final exam period. and. For the final revision, the only thing I will be grading is how well you, the quality of the changes that you made based on the suggestions I have included in your final paper. So really be thinking about that. You can't simply just turn in the same paper, even if you did well on the final paper. You cannot simply turn in uh, a final revision that's the exact same thing and do well. I'm really looking for moving in the, re the writing process beyond just a single draft and really thinking about how can you integrate changes to create a better final um, product. It's an important part of the writing process. It's one that students oftentimes choose not to do. <laughs> like Students are often really good at editing and proofreading, um, but maybe not as good at making more substantive changes, which is what I mean by revision. Um, so just keep that in mind that that will be the expectation for the final paper in this class. Again, if you have questions along the way, please don't hesitate to email me, give me a phone, give me a call, um, and I'll be more than happy to help you out with those.